If you are amongst those who have been waiting months for an order to come in, you should get prepared for even longer waiting periods, skyrocketing prices, widespread shortages, and less variety of an increasing range of products as strains in the U.S. supply chain are compromising manufacturers and retailers' ability to keep up with the exploding demand. And if you're thinking about buying a new car, smartphone, or any domestic appliance, you might face the longest waiting line and the highest price surges in the market as a global chip shortage continues to delay the production and delivery of many goods. The semiconductor shortage was initially concentrated in the auto industry. Last year, after the sanitary outbreak burst in America and triggered the worst economic recession since the Great Depression of the 1930s, global supply chains faced a major breakdown, and car makers decided to reduce orders for chips, anticipating a decline in demand, while tech companies, seeing their sales jump amid lockdown mandates, ran to ensure as many chips as they could. However, the health crisis and government stimulus have changed consumer shopping patterns, and demand for cars never ceased to grow. But many other factors contributed to the shortage of supply, such as U.S. government sanctions on Chinese technology companies and extreme weather, leaving automakers at the end of the waiting line for semiconductors. Right now, as the shortage is going from bad to worse, it has spread from cars to consumer electronics. According to Goldman Sachs, 169 U.S. industries embed semiconductors in their products, and considering the largest part of chip production remains concentrated in a handful of suppliers, supply chain experts have been warning that the crunch is likely to last until 2022. The computer chips facing the highest demand are not remarkably sophisticated or expensive, but they're essential components used in every product with a digital screen, from kitchen appliances to washing machines and electronic gadgets. In the average car, at least 50 to 150 chips are used to enable the functioning of applications such as driver assistance systems and navigation control. Since January, Volkswagen, Ford, Fiat, Chrysler, and Nissan were forced to adapt production and in some cases to shut down plants because of the shortages. The problem continues to disrupt the industry to this day. Just last week, BMW-owned Mini announced it will suspend production at a plant in England due to the lack of availability of semiconductor components. Ford disclosed that the chip shortage will reduce production this year by some 1.1 million vehicles and dent its profit margin by about $2.5 billion. And of course, for consumers, the chip shortages will result in an increase in the price of goods. The constraints are already driving up the price of vehicles across the country, particularly because car dealers are seeing stock levels sharply drop. In March, the average price for a new car has jumped to $37,200, marking an 8.4% increase from the same period a year ago, and that's according to J.D. Power. In earnings calls this week, Several firms have revealed concerns about their ability to meet demand in face of the ongoing supply chain bottlenecks. Some said they don't expect this situation to be resolved until the end of the year. Kurt Sievers, chief executive of NXP Semi, a leader in automotive chip production, says, Our current expectation is that we will face a tight supply environment for at least the remainder of 2021. Meanwhile, Tesla CEO Elon Musk has highlighted that the first quarter presented some of the most difficult supply chain challenges that they've ever experienced in their life of the company. Consumer electronics manufacturers are also suffering from the impact of the shortage as it's affected the production of pretty much every product. Refrigerators, dishwashers, 
dryers have been especially tough to find, according to Liden's owner Bob Finn. On its latest earnings call, Samsung told analysts that it's working hard to reduce shortages of semiconductors and other key parts, which could weigh on sales of products like smartphones. Moreover, Apple CFO Luca Maestri disclosed that the company expects a revenue drop of at least $3 billion to $4 billion this quarter due to such supply constraints. As the health crisis is still lingering and government money keeps boosting consumer spending, meeting the growing demand is becoming increasingly difficult. In addition to the worldwide chip shortage, company leaders are underscoring that the long-term impacts of the Suez Canal blockage, overwhelmed ports, and other logistic backlogs are also weighing upon global trade. We're not immune to these challenges with the blockage of the Suez Canal and significant bottlenecks in West Coast ports leading to delays, says Croc CEO Andrew Reese. Global logistics are expected to remain congested. Furthermore, Stephen Madden CEO Edward Rosenfeld outlined that freight will be the shoe company's most critical challenge in the months ahead, since ocean rates have more than doubled and air freight went up by nearly 200%. He expects port congestion problems to extend at least until the end of the second quarter. Plastics and resins and a series of other raw materials, including steel and aluminum, are also facing major shortages, and consumers are already trying to judge how rising prices and material shortages are likely to play out during the second half of the year. Right now, according to Liren's Finn, consumers' main concern is for how much longer they will have to wait to receive their orders. Finn says employees at Litton's appliance showroom take up to 700 calls a day from customers asking about delivery dates. We spend a third or half of our time just taking phone calls from customers who purchased merchandise anywhere from two weeks to six months ago, wanting to find out where their product is and when it's gonna be in stock but none of the manufacturers give us firm dates for delivery. They give us target dates, and we just have to adjust, he said. It's not just chips and raw materials. A lot of things consumers buy on a regular basis are disappearing from grocery shelves, while others are registering price hikes, while inflation subtly eats away at our wallets. Even though raw materials have seen the biggest price increases, the cost of many household goods has started to creep up as well, as the supply chain crisis is also impacting what's available at grocery stores. Rising commodity costs and the overall uptick in the price of everything are cutting down corporate profits, and consumers are being forced to cover that difference. Last month, Consumer prices climbed 2.6% compared with a year ago, according to the Department of Labor. Most buyers might not be able to identify where the higher bills are coming from, but companies have been reducing the size of packaging to keep the current price, consequently driving people to buy more. During times of crisis, brand loyalty tends to increase as people look for stability. However, companies are having to reduce variety to mitigate the risks of going completely out of stock. Greenacre store manager Matt Murray revealed that the largest manufacturer of vitamins in the world sent a letter out last month saying they were filling 50% of their orders, so half of the things they carry they don't have in stock right now. Murray said he doesn't know how long there will be a shortage on products because some of it is due to raw material shortages, some due to warehouse problems. It seems that 2021 will bring empty shelves just as those seen during 2020's unprecedented grocery shortages. Considering many supply chain factors are difficult to control and the outlook remains unpredictable, major grocers and food brands have been playing it as safe as possible, 
sticking to their best sellers and moving away from the less popular items. At this point, you've probably noticed that the variety on grocery shelves has been dwindling. Companies are strategizing and prioritizing some products to optimize production. The new consumer patterns have pushed brands like Coca-Cola to discontinue products much faster than they normally would, and experts warn food and beverage companies will keep shrinking their portfolios this year, meaning that your favorite cookie, your favorite soup or favorite soda flavor may soon disappear from the stores. Brands are gonna continue with stock keeping unit rationalization based on what appeals to the broadest segment of shoppers, affirmed David Gottlieb, managing director of the Americas at Trax, a digital company providing AI solutions for retail. He says the trend of simplification seems to be echoed by retailers as well. I'm hearing from my customers that retailers are telling them they don't want 12 varieties of toilet paper. Walmart, for instance, dramatically diminished their offering to unburden their supply chain during the health crisis. The retailer reduced most product categories, just maintaining two options in each, their own in-house brand and the bestseller category brand. And this trend will certainly persist throughout this year. Shortages of canned goods are expected to include a wide range of staples, varying from canned vegetables to soft drinks and craft beer. It impacted not just companies like Coca-Cola, but also anybody playing in the can space. So, Homo with their canned meats, everybody has that same issue, revealed one supply chain analyst in an interview with Business Insider. Most vegetables are grown seasonally and harvested once a year. And after supplies are gone, you simply cannot produce more of it, explained Gus Labiak, president and CEO of Crasdale Foods, a grocery wholesaler in New York City. Labiak also predicts that the availability of household cleaners will not come back to normal levels for a while. Clorox announced that the demand for their cleaning products went up by 500% after the sanitary outbreak started. Although having increased production, the company said not to expect the supply to fully recover before this summer. Another major change brought on by the health crisis was the expansion of the home cooking trend. However, pre-cooked food solutions and easy-to-make meals in a box, including macaroni and cheese, frozen pizzas, and pre-cooked rice, are already nowhere to be found. Since February, industry experts have been alerting that a massive chicken wing shortage was brewing. And now, it is here. But chicken wings aren't the only meat in short supply. Business Insider reported that bacon and hot dogs and several pork products might become scarce in the summer. Bargains on meat might be tough for consumers to find this summer, said the analyst. So my advice to consumers would be to stock up when you find a good deal. If you haven't started prepping just yet, you should take the chance to stock up on your favorite staples before stores completely run out of supply. Given that the supply chain crisis is getting worse by the day, there's no end in sight for the ongoing product shortages. And the longer you wait, the highest will be the risk to find inflated prices and a very limited variety of flavors and brands. The time has come for Americans to confront the effects caused by the trillions of printed money that are flooding the system. Heated demand and supply shortages will undoubtedly reflect the rapid decline of our purchasing power. So get ready, because the next stage of the U.S. economic collapse will bring about challenges you might have never imagined. <laughs>